Hello everybody, this is Graham Anderson, and today I'm going to be looking at the Belgian beers race. Now, I have always enjoyed sampling beers from other countries, and I've even attempted brewing my own beer at home to varying degrees of success. So when I saw this game, the theme really jumped out at me as one I really wanted to try and get to the table. So the theme of this game is you are competing against your fellow beer drinkers to race around Belgium to the different breweries to sample and purchase beer. Of course, along with purchasing some cheese so you're not drinking on an empty stomach. Whomever can most efficiently get around to the different breweries, sampling their wares, all within moderation, as if you drink too much, you're going to fall asleep and lose the rest of the day. But whomever does this the best is going to win the game. Now the game is one of route optimization. You have a fixed number of time units you can spend over the three days, with each time unit representing approximately 30 minutes. So you could take a bicycle, as long as you haven't drunk too much, and or you can use public transportation, which is guaranteed to pick you up, but is probably the slowest. Or you can hitchhike, which is the riskiest, as people tend not to stop for people that have drunk too much. Now the main mechanism for this game is the time units. The person furthest back in the time track will take the next action. This means that you could be taking a couple actions in a row, or if you do an action that takes a long time, it might be a while before you get to go again. So, I like the theme. I like the main mechanisms. So, will this game be like a best beer you've ever tasted, or one that you're going to be discreetly disposing of when no one's looking? Let's get it to the table, see how it's played, and come back with my final thoughts on the Belgian Beers Race. So here's the Belgian beer race setup. I've set the game board up for three players, but because of the size of the board and the player boards, I'm only showing one player board off to the side. Draw coasters randomly based on the player count. So for our three players, we're going to draw 15 and place them on the corresponding numbers on the map. Then place a bottle token of the matching color on each brewery. Shuffle the objective cards separately. Draw four level one cards and place them to the right of the bottle and three more to the left with a level one card deck just on the left spot. Draw level 3 cards equal to the player count, so in our game that will be 3, and the rest of the level 3 cards can go back in the box. Place the end of day marker on space 24 on the time track, along with a field of broken tokens on the time track. All the other tokens and dice are placed off to one side. For each player, they will get all the components and place their trackers on the tasted beers track, the cheese track, the bonus tracks, cheers tracks, and the breathalyzer track. Place a disc on the first space of the time track, and the player who's going to go first will have their disc on top of the stack. Place a disc on the zero of the scoring track, and place your meeple in the Grand Palace of Brussels. Keep your 35 visited brewery cubes beside your board. The goal of the Belgian beer race is to go around and taste beers at the different breweries over the course of three days. At the end of the third day, you need to get back to the Grand Palace of Brussels. You'll be getting most of your points from drinking beers and visiting different type of breweries. But be careful, if you drink too much too fast, you'll fall asleep and your day will be over. The game is played over three days, consisting of a number of time units, and each action you take will take some of those time units. And the player whose marker is furthest left and on top of the pile will always be the person to take the next action. So there can be times when you take multiple actions in a row, or you might not take an action for a while. So let's talk about the actions you'll be taking during the game. Every time you take an action, you'll move your player piece along the time track the number of time units that that action takes. Moving. Whenever you move in between two breweries, you'll have three options. Between each brewery, it will show you the option of how many time units it will take to use that type of transportation. Within Brussels itself, moving between the breweries is always the same, and it's printed beside the city. If you choose the bicycle, you will always succeed, and for every time four units you spend bicycling, with no other action in between, you must lower your breathalyzer track. I'll talk a bit about this track later. The public transportation is often the slowest, but you can always take it. You will roll a die, and if you roll any symbol besides the plus two bus symbol, you're going to move your time unit piece the number printed on the board. If you get the plus two, you're going to be moving your time unit marker, the printed cost, plus two more. With either the bicycle or the public transportation, you will always move your meeple to the desired brewery. For the last option, it is often the quickest, but is also the riskiest, and that's hitchhiking. Roll a die. If you get the TBBR or the late bus symbol, move your meeple to the destination and pay the printed cost for hitchhiking. If you roll the failed hitchhiking face, no one stops and you lose two time units, but you do not move your meeple. If, on your next action, you try and hitchhike again to the same location, you can roll an additional die. If you fail again and try again, you're going to be rolling three dice. 
that you cannot take any other actions between these hitchhiking attempts to get these bonus dies. If a failed attempt means that you are not the next player to go because you've moved past another player's timepiece, you can take a plus two or plus one token to remember to roll additional dice on your next attempt. When you arrive at a new brewery, take one of the coaster tokens, either the bottle or one of the coasters, if there are any. Some of the breweries on the board are special. If you arrive at one of these, you move your marker on the bonus track. Each brewery can only count once for these bonus tracks, even if you revisit the same brewery later on. If this is your first time at a brewery, place one of your cubes at the brewery. This will track all the different breweries you have visited. At the brewery, you can do several actions. For one time unit, you can buy beer, and if available, like it shows here, you can also buy cheese. Each can only be bought once per visit. If you're just buying beer, you move your time unit up one unit. If you're just buying cheese, it's also one unit. If you're buying both together for a single action, you can move your time unit up two spaces. Take three beer cubes for the matching color from the brewery if you're buying beer, and place them in your backpack. If you buy cheese, move your cheese marker up one spot. At a brewery, you can also taste beer. Move your marker one time unit, then move your beer tasting marker up one spot, and move your marker on the breathalyzer track up one spot. Now both beer tasting and buying can only happen one time per visit. If you want to taste or buy at the same brewery, you must go to another brewery first, then come back. Let's quickly talk about your breathalyzer track. This is the track of how drunk you are, and it will affect what you can do. If you pass this line, you can no longer take a bicycle for transportation. If you pass this line, the penalties for failing a hitchhiking and public transportation roll are doubled. If you reach this level, you immediately fall asleep and your day is over. Now there is a reminder on how to lower your breathalyzer track during the day. You can always eat cheese at any time to lower the track by one spot, and bicycling four consecutive time units will also lower it by one. This track will also automatically be lowered at the end of each day as you sleep it off. Now the last two actions you can do in your turn are special action. The toasting action will automatically happen if you arrive at a brewery and there are one or more other player meeples there. You will both discard a beer out of your backpack. If any of the players do not have a beer, you will not toast with them. If you have nothing in your backpack, you will not toast with anybody. Once both players have discarded a cube, both will move one time unit, move one space on the breathalyzer track, and one on their tasted beer track, and one on the cheers track. If there are multiple players at the brewery, you, as the active player, will do this with each player already there. If you do not have enough beer in your backpack to toast each player at the brewery, you will not be able to toast anybody. The last action is the camping action, and this will usually be the last action you will take during the day. You will no longer be able to take any other action. Lay your meeple down, and you can drink a beer in your backpack, which means you can discard one beer from your backpack to advance one space on the tasted beer track and the breathalyzer track for each time unit left in your day. And that's all the actions you can perform. During any of your actions, if you have achieved any of the current objectives, you can claim it and get that many victory points. Then shift all the cards down and refill it from the other side of the objectives. This is going to be done at the end of your turn, not after you've achieved an objective. Now the bottles on the time track have an option for people to discard objective cards. The first player to reach or pass a bottle has an option to break it and remove an objective card or leave it. If they leave it, the next person to reach it or pass it will have the same option. Anytime a player takes the action, you flip the bottle over and it can no longer be used to discard a card. Once all players have camped or run out of time, the day ends. Take the stack of tokens as they are, so the last person to camp will be the token on top and move them to the zero space. Then apply any difficult awakening penalties based on your breathalyzer track. The more you drank the day before, the later you will awake. Next, all players adjust their breathalyzer down four levels. We then do day scoring. You'll score points for your tasted beer track, plus any bottles or coasters you got from arriving at a brewery. You do not reset your tasted beer track or discard any of your bottles or coasters. You're going to be scoring these each day. At the end of day one, shuffle the level two objective cards into the draw deck. And you start the next day. The only thing the players lose overnight are any plus one or plus two tokens they finished the previous day with. At the end of the third day, all players must be back at the Grand Palace in Brussels. For each step they are away, they're going to be losing 15 points per step. Being in Brussels is not the same thing as being at the Grand Palace. If you're in a brewery within Brussels, you're still considered to be one step away from the Grand Palace. We then go into final scoring. Score your tasted beer track, your bottles and coasters, your bonuses for visiting the different types of breweries, one VP per beer cube you still have in your backpack, score your cheese track, your cheers track, you'll also score based on how many breweries you visited. You can also score the level 3 objective cards, and these cards are open to all players and all players can complete them. Then the player with the most points is the winner. Now let's get back to see what I thought about the Belgian beer race. 
So theme and components. I'm gonna come right out and say I absolutely love the theme of this game. I think this game would probably get my most thematic game of 2021. I love the absolute attention to detail in the game. If you flip the main board over, it shows you where the actual breweries are on the map that you're gonna be visiting. It even comes with a separate little booklet that outlines each of the breweries and gives you a little background uh, for each one. But beyond that, just the actions you're taking and the consequences of drinking too much just make thematic sense. You can't ride a bicycle if you're too drunk. Hitchhiking is risky, and being exceedingly tipsy will make it even less likely that the drivers are going to stop for you. You know what, I just can't say enough good things about the theme. Now I will say that this game is rated 14+, plus, and I'm going to assume that's strictly because of the subject matter. It's definitely not for the complexity of the gameplay. Now as for the components, they're for the most part good. My biggest complaint about the components is actually probably the size. It is a huge table hog. Trying to get the main board and all the player boards was extremely difficult. I do wish they had designed the player boards lengthwise, uh, sorry, widthwise as opposed to lengthwise. And I do have some other minor nitpicks for the components. The rules weren't always 100% clear sometimes, and I can honestly say the first time I played this game, I didn't realize that Brussels was not actually not off to the side. That when you leave Brussels, you also don't have to use the roots on the side. It's actually in the middle of the board where the big B is. I don't know why I missed that, but it would be nice to call that out in the, uh, the rule book. The pieces themselves are actually fun. This, but the size, again, can be an issue. Although the board itself is large, the breweries do get crowded with components. Other than that, I was happy with the components, and I actually really liked the different uh, figures for the, your wooden pieces. Now on to the gameplay. It's pretty straightforward. You're just going to be moving around the board uh, and tasting beer and buying cheeses. The game is ultimately fine, but the basis of the game, although fun, can get repetitive after a while. But again, this is where the theme comes in and saves the game. I enjoyed the balance of the game as well. You need to be drinking beer as soon as possible. Getting those points before the end of the first day can be very lucrative in the long run, as you're going to be scoring them each day. But just going from place to place and only drinking means your breathalyzer track is going to go up too quickly. And that's the balance I enjoyed. Fundamentally, the game is about getting your taste to track up quickly. But that can't be the only thing you concentrate on. Getting to places with cheese allows you to manage your breathalyzer track. Getting the coasters and bottles from visiting breweries will also get you ongoing points. Going to the special breweries will also get you a good chunk of points at the end of the game. And even buying beer allows you to toast other players and is also a supportive strategy. So I like that there were other things to do during the game, but I felt that they were all just like as a supportive aspect of the main goal of, of tasting beer. Again, very thematic, but play-wise, each place felt a little too similar to the previous one. You know, I couldn't branch out and try something completely new strategy for the game. I do have some other minor issues with the game. The objective cards and the end of game objectives. They didn't really feel like they were worth going for. You wouldn't be basing your entire strategy around them. Yes, if you achieved them and you got some points, that was great. But often the games I played were getting 100 points or 150 points by the end of the game through the various tracks. So though, although at the end of the game you can get, let's say, 15 to 20 points if you achieve all the end of game scoring, often the work to achieve them was not worth it to go out of your way if that was the only thing you are going to be getting from that action. Even the in-game objectives were not something anybody in my game uh, was focused on. If they had it, or was easy to do during their, their game, or was tied into something they were already planning to do, the players would definitely go for them. But no one ever said, you know, this turn, I'm going to go for that objective, and nothing else. So I wish that those were more integrated. The other issue I had with the game was actually the traveling. I played this game with two, three, and four players, and a couple times each. And no one ever <laughs> seemed to take the public transportation. It just never seemed to be worth it. Maybe it was just groupthink and the way maybe I explain the game. And maybe other groups would approach this differently. But most of my games devolved into just attempting to hitchhike turn after turn after turn after you can no longer ride your bike. If hitchhiking is a two travel and public transportation was a six or eight, then definitely going to be trying hitchhiking two to three times. If it was much closer, like two to four for public transportation, then even then most people went for hitchhiking. Now when your breathalyzer gets too close to the top and you have a penalty for hitchhiking was doubled, that's when it might make sense to take public transportation. But honestly, at that point, you needed to do something about your breathalyzer anyway, as you're almost asleep. I wish there was something else that the public transportation did that made it more worthwhile. Yes, it is much slower, but maybe you can nap on the bus and bring your breathalyzer down a bit? I don't know, just something like that. So, would I recommend this game? Ultimately, I would. I enjoyed the base mechanisms of the time management and route planning. But if that's all the game was, I don't think I would enjoy it as much as I do. I think the huge, huge main plus for me was the theme. It was so well integrated into the mechanisms and everything just seemed to make sense. You drink too much, you fall asleep. The more you drink, 
they later are going to wake up the next morning. You can't or shouldn't ride a bike after you've been drinking. Hitchhiking is risky. It fits together so well. Combine that with the designer's obvious love for the subject matter, it just made the game one of the most thematic games I've played this year. But not everything in this game was as fine as a well-crafted beer. I do wish the end of game objectives were more engaging. Maybe have players have secret objectives that they're going for. I was also not a huge fan of the transportation option. I do wish those were maybe tweaked a little bit. I also felt the game was a little too long for what you're doing. Now there is a variant in the rulebook for a shorter game, which may be an option. I also felt my plays were a bit too similar between play to play. But I am going to give this game a 7 out of 10 in the Dice Tower seal of approval. Although there were some flaws with this game, the theme is so well done and so engaging that I was able to overlook them and thoroughly enjoy my plays of the game. If you enjoy beer or know someone who is and enjoys a good board game, then this is one you should definitely check out. But that's it for the moment. Until next time, thanks for watching.